Axman, citizen of the year. Good for him. Hey, welcome back to our bandwagon fans. This is Jeff. And before I start talking about the movie, I just want to invite everybody to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And if you like what you're seeing, go ahead and hit that like button as well. Um, all the likes, send them all my way. I need more likes. I well, they're nice to have. And also, uh, go ahead and leave some comments down below. After you've heard what I had to say, let me know what you think and tell me where I have gone wrong. Um, speaking of going wrong, uh, watching this movie was going wrong. <laughs> so this is the latest Liam Neeson movie, Cold Pursuit. And before we get actually talking about the movie, go ahead and enjoy some highlights from the trailer. I'm very honored to be named Kehoe Citizen of the Year. I'm just a guy who keeps a strip of civilization open. When you drive the same road day after day, it's easy to think about the road not taken. I was lucky. I picked a good road early, and I stayed on it. Mr. Coxman? What can I do for you? It's about your son. He died of a heroin overdose. We didn't know our own son. Kyle wasn't a druggie. Sorry, but all the parents say that. You're gonna have to say a few words. Kyle's dead. Tell me what happened. He got mixed up with some drug dealer. Viking. He likes hurting people. What is it with all these nicknames? Speedo, Viking, Eskimo. It's a gangster thing. Did you have a nickname? Wingman. Wingman. Gonna kill him. <laughs> no, those guys. One guy can disappear. Two? Who wants me dead? Three of Vikings drug dealers have disappeared. What makes you think you can kill a man? I read it in a crime novel. So, uh, Cold Pursuit starring Liam Neeson, and we're gonna, gonna address the elephant in the room right away. Right the week that this movie came out, uh, Liam Neeson did an interview where he described a moment in his life in the 80s where he was basically cruising a neighborhood in Ireland looking for a black person to kill because a black man had raped. He had just found out that a black man had raped a, a friend of his. Um, and that, that in terms of doing a movie review, it brings up the whole, the whole issue of can you separate the artist from the art and appreciate the art even if you have an issue with the artist. Um, fortunately for this particular movie that's not an issue. Uh, whatever you think about the artist himself, the art in this case sucked. Uh, Cold Pursuit is an early front runner for worst movie of the year although we're only in February I'm sure there will be plenty more to go underneath it but this movie is just bad. So if you, want, if you want the review in a nutshell, don't go see it. If you want to stick around and I'll talk about why you shouldn't go see it and maybe you'll get some more entertainment out of me ranting about it than you actually will watching the movie itself. So <clears throat> where did this movie go wrong? It actually, this is a rare movie where the title card Right, where when it actually shows the name of the movie told you exactly why this movie was gonna suck. Um, so this is so Cold Pursuit, starring Liam Neeson, is was marketed as your typical Liam Neeson, somebody done someone wrong and he's gonna go avenge them movie in in the in the vein of like taken um and the, the the way the title card was kind of fit that little theme. And then, so it, it's a completely black background with white letters. And then the white letters kind of poof away like a, a snowball getting broken up. And I remember watching, actually watching this, I was like, all right, that's, that's curious. That's the way the title card broke up does not match what I'm expecting from this movie. But no, that's that's how the movie went. Um, this was, it was like, it was like, uh, probably you probably most people didn't see this movie. But if anybody saw the Joe Pesci movie Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag, 
where and it's I love that movie. It's one of the funniest movies ever made. But it had uh, um, it took your typical like hitman mafia movie, but really super dark, but incredibly funny. And that's what they were trying to do with this, with this cold pursuit. But it wasn't consistently funny. It it kept going back and forth between what you would expect from a Liam Neeson movie and then this real extreme slapstick comedy. And that mix of tone was just was just jarring. So for example, there's a scene early on in the movie where Liam Neeson uh puts a puts a rifle puts the barrel of a rifle in his mouth. Now that's not something and it wasn't it wasn't exaggerated. It was literally he's suicidal. He's about to kill himself. And that's not something it was it wasn't played for laughs. It was played straight. And that's immediately undercut by scenes of slapstick comedy like 2 minutes later. And that's how the movie went for like the first 30 to 45 minutes of was incredibly over the top gory violence that was played straight and then slapstick comedy scenes in, interspersed. By the end of the movie, it just became more, hey Ernie. Oh. Hi. So this is Ernie. He's a little cranky tonight because it's rainy and he can't go outside. But, so the, so the movie kept going back and forth between this, uh, um, yeah, exactly. See, he knows the movie sucked. Um, so it kept going back and forth between these between these moments of slapstick and like extremely brutal violence. Hey, 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 hey. hey. No, no, Ernie. No, that no, that's my microphone. So the microphone's a little fuzzy and now he wants it. There you go. You go away. Uh, where was I? So <clears throat> So one, there were a ton of characters in this movie. Like, probably 40 characters had scenes where they were featured only to die off. Like, they, they popped up and were almost immediately killed. And then it had, it had a little motif running through where as soon as somebody died, um, the black screen with white with white lettering would come back up and kind of tell you their and tell you their name and that the you know kind of, kind of almost like a tombstone where it showed like the day the year they were born the year they died and it, it was doing that constantly throughout the movie and then as more and more people died like the screen would fill up with like 20 names all at once um in a better movie that might have been kind of cute and haha but by the time they were doing it in this movie just really really did not care um and then as so at some point in the movie they started introducing um native americans and i don't i don't i think i think they said what tribe they were from so basically liam neeson is his son is murdered by a by a drug gang there's uh, another hiccup where a rival drug gang is is a group of Native Americans, and now there's these, and Liam Neeson is now hunting in cold pursuit of the people that killed his son, and playing these two gangs against each other and trying to survive this whole thing, even though he's just uh, an everyman, you know, citizen of citizen of the year in in some small town. And as they introduce the Native Americans, I think. This movie was actually trying to push a message about honoring commitments or fairness because it started really leaning on the idea that the that white people were interlopers on natives land or that uh, white people that renege on deals deserve to die um <clears throat> and I, I i say i think they were trying to do a message but i really couldn't care less because by that time the movie had already lost me with because of its because of its tone and balance but yeah i think i think they were actually trying to push this message um and that's kind of the last thing to really say about this movie you know liam neeson all, all the other things going on around him i'm not i'm not going to talk about that right now if you, you guys make up your own mind about what you think about him and what he said but he was actually in the movie surprisingly little 
The first 30 minutes is pretty much all Liam Neeson, but the last hour or so, the movie got so convoluted between between the two rival drug gangs that you actually Liam Neeson was probably off screen for you know 10 minutes at a time. So again, make of that what you will. So Cold Pursuit, uh, don't watch it. It's not worth it's not worth streaming. It is it is incredibly boring, tonally inconsistent. Characters didn't make any sense, and just a, a overall dumpster fire in a snowstorm. So. My name is Jeff, and this is Bandwagon Fans. Thanks for watching, and get on the bandwagon.